The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of cloud and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relentless and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent or leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery. A by word among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 103. Let's read it in unison. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be a sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in, another, in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished 
and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many riches, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. But then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen, not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since stumbling into an Episcopal church on the first Sunday of February many, many moons ago, I find that no matter what may be happening in my personal life or the world at large, that there is a lot of comfort for me in the church's calendar. A calendar where seasons are measured not by weather, but by the events of faith, the deeds of apostles, martyrs, saints, and most of all, the life and ministry of Jesus. And for me, at a time when so much about how we do and live isn't what we're used to, isn't consistent. I find that consistency of the sacred calendar all the more important and all the more comforting. Today on that calendar, we mark the beginning of the season of Lent, the time set apart each year to prepare for the commemoration of the events of the Passion and ultimately the celebration of the Resurrection at Easter. The color of this season is purple, a color that nudges us to remember that we are in a serious time, time of waiting, pondering, preparing. But purple is also a royal color. Purple reminds us we wait, ponder, and prepare for the coming of a king. This coming and what it means for us is one of the great mysteries of the church. Not the kind of mystery to be solved by a detective or to be understood with brain power and intuition, but a mystery that is a truth far beyond words, that's bigger than simple comprehension, one that has to be experienced and is known only by faith and participation. We can walk right through a mystery and not even know it's there. 
The mystery of Easter is perhaps the greatest mystery of our faith. And the church learned long ago. This kind of mystery does take preparation, a lot of waiting, a lot of pondering. In the model of Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness, an echo of the 40 years Israel dwelt there, we spend 40 days in preparing for this mystery. During those 40 days, we're asked to spend intentional time thinking about, reflecting on our lives. And yet, these weeks are not just about us. While we engage in individual practices, these weeks are really about remembering who we really are as a community, as a people. We are remembering we are people of God. And as the prophets long ago were called to remind people to live as people of God, so does this season. This season of waiting, pondering, preparing. It isn't a matter of simply confessing and moving on with our lives, but about being quiet enough, long enough, to hear the still, small voice of God calling to God's own people. If we listen, we will hear the voice of the Good Shepherd reminding us we are a part of God's flock. And that God is always ready to welcome us home, whether we're prodigal or not. That God wants us to remember that God is working through us in ways infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Today, we are reminded of the finite nature of our humanity, the limits of our earthly pilgrimage, of the need we have for grace. Not because we are bad, but because of our infinite capacity for good. If we allow ourselves to be open to God's transformative power. Today we are asked to accept, to embrace, to meet that power by spending a little more time than we usually do in prayer, dwelling on the word of God and thinking a bit about more of self-denial. This season and these things are both at their heart a request for God to come near and an acceptance of God's open invitation. What may seem like simple things or just items on our to-do list actually have the power to change us. When we allow ourselves to come close to God, God does not leave us where God finds us. God loves us far too much for that. And God is here now waiting for you to accept God's invitation. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer.
Please join me in reciting Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O God of my salvation, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has po given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, 
and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. God's peace, friends. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.